Hi, Monica Poole here, designer and sewing tutor from Australia. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can finish your quilt with a one inch wide machine sewn binding, and then I'm going to show you how you can combine that with a scallop edge. In the last video, I showed how to make this cool to go crazy patchwork reversible quilt, and if you missed that, you can check it out in the card here. This is one of my most popular designs that I made in 2005. It's called the Sweet and Sassy Quilt, and if you're interested, the pattern is available to purchase on our website. The link is in the description. So let's talk about the machine sewn binding. Now I must say, this is not like a traditional binding. And as you can see, there's a one inch wide binding on the front, and when you turn it over to the back, there's no visible binding. So I mainly use the one inch wide machine sewn binding in my quilts that are made with the easy cover strip method. The cover strip is one inch wide and it ties in nicely with the one inch wide binding. So if you missed that video, the link is in the description. You can also use this binding on any quilt that would suit a one inch wide binding. So this is how it's done. Binding strips are cut two and three quarter inches wide. Cut as many strips as you need for your quilt. Join your binding strips on a 45 degree angle. To do this, lay one binding strip on your cutting mat with the right side facing up in a horizontal direction. Then place another strip right side down in a vertical direction. I like to extend a little bit so I've got my selvage extending out each end. Now what I'm going to do is mark a diagonal line going from corner to corner. From the inside corner to the outside corner. Next step is to sew that line. Trim back to a quarter inch seam allowance. And you'll see that the strip is running in one long straight line. Press the seam open. And then press your strip in half lengthwise with the wrong sides facing. So here's my sample, it's a 20 inch square that I have quilted together with the batting and the backing. So my sample has all edges level and on my sample that I made last week, when you watch the video you'll see that the cover strip finishes half an inch away from the edge and our batting also finishes half inch away from the edge. So this method works fantastic for my quilt as you go with the cover strip method and you can also use it on quilts where the edges are all nice and level. So let's get on to our sample. The spotty side is the front and the back is the plain side and I'm going to start sewing the binding just on one side edge on the back leaving a six inch tail to start. To sew the binding on, we're going to take a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So start sewing, and as you approach the corner, stop about two inches away from the corner. Then I'm going to take a little ruler, and I'm going to make a mark. I can see where the edge of my quilt is. Make a mark that is on the binding that is 3 8 of an inch away from the binding. Now that little mark is only going to be a quarter of an inch deep. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some scissors and I'm just going to make a little snip in the binding, only quarter of an inch deep, and that little snip is actually three eighths of an inch away from the edge of the quilt. Sew to level with that nick and stop with your needle in the down position. Stop with the needle in the down position, level with the nick, and then lift the foot, and then turn the quilt to the next edge. What will happen is you will be able to just flip that binding up, and that little mitre is gonna open up and make a little right angle. You can't see that yet, but I will show you that in a minute. And then as we sew along like that, And so shortly I'll show you that little right angle opening. But I'm just going to continue sewing the binding along the edge of the quilt to the next corner and I'll show that turning again. So it's very different to a traditional binding. Approaching the corner, I'm going to make a mark on the binding that is 3 8 of an inch away from the edge of the quilt. My little mark is going to be about a quarter of an inch. 
and then I'm going to make a little nick in the binding. Now that little nick is only in the binding and it's only about a quarter of an inch deep. If you make that too deep you're going to end up with a little hole in your binding. I'm now going to sew level to that nick and I'm going to stop with my needle in the down position next to the nick. Then I'm going to lift my foot, spin the quilt, flip the top binding out of the way and you can see that does make a little bit of a right angle as it goes up there. Pop my foot down again and continue sewing. Stop sewing so that you'll be leaving about a six inch gap and then take your work out from the machine and cut the thread ready to join the binding. Just before we join the binding, here's a close up of the right angle that is formed in the binding. When we make that little snip, which is only a quarter of an inch deep, we stop with the needle in the down position. So that's three eighths of an inch away from the edge of the quilt. And then we continue sewing. So that's the little right angle that we get there. To join the binding, Level off one end of the binding strip, mark a line, square that and then cut that with your scissors. So that is going to be about in the middle of our opening there. Overlap the binding and make a mark where the binding finishes. Just make sure that it's going to be nice and taut. So here is my mark here. And then what I've done is I have an off cut of my binding and I've opened that out. So our binding's two and three quarter inches wide. And I'm just going to mark that there. So from here to here should be two and three quarter inches wide. I'm going to mark that and cut. To join the binding, the next step is to open out one end. Now remember how we had one running across on horizontal direction and then we're going to open out our other one and we're going to run this one across in a vertical direction and now what we need to do is get to the machine and if you need to unpick back a little bit do that and we're actually going to sew from corner to corner so i'll just unpick a little bit there so here we go bringing that around like that and then I'm going to pin so that I will be sewing from this corner here out to this corner down there. You can mark that if you want to make that a little bit easier or you can just judge that by eye and sew. So here's a little tip. Press one end on a 45 degree angle like that. And then when we open them out to join, you'll have a crease that you can sew in to get that nice, perfect mitre. Here's my join sewn on a 45 degree angle. Just double check that everything is sitting nice and flat and if it is then you can trim your seam back to a quarter of an inch and continue sewing the binding onto the edge of the quilt. There are lots of different ways to join your binding ends together. This is quite a good way that I find to be quite successful. Next step is to trim across the corners, making sure that you're not cutting right to the stitching line, just leaving about an eighth of an inch. Now press the binding away from the quilt. Fold the entire width of the binding over to the front of the quilt and pin in place. When you reach the corner you'll see that it's already formed a 45 degree angle. To fold that over neatly, first of all push in the seam allowance and then use a pin and make that pin so it's just sitting level with the stitching line. 
and then fold the binding over. Just have a little bit of a fiddle there to get a nice mitre and continue pinning. Now sew the binding close to the inner folded edge. So here's our machine sewn binding all finished. You can see it's one inch wide on the front. On the back, all you're going to see is a machine sewn line sewn nice and neatly one inch away from the edge. Now I do recommend coming back and hand stitching those mitres in the corners down, just so that when you wash the quilt, they don't pop out. So let's do that again onto our crazy patchwork reversible quilt as you go quilt, only this time we're gonna add the scallop edge. I'm using the scallop template from the Sweet and Sassy pattern. If you like, you can make your own scallop template. What you need to do is to trace a scallop onto some template plastic and cut it out. So we want to make four scallop edges just like this. To do this, cut four strips that are three and three quarter inches wide for the front and cut four strips that are also three and three quarter inches wide for the back. We need to cut some batting, so cut batting that is three and a quarter inches wide and then baste that together using basting spray, making one edge level and that will leave us with a gap of half an inch on one side. Mark the scallop template onto the wrong side of your back strip. First of all, find the center and then mark the edge, make a little mark just on the edge of the template, slide it along and continue marking. We're marking three scallops either side of the center. Measure the edge of your quilt and subtract three quarters of an inch. This is because our seam allowance is three eighths of an inch. So two times three eighths of an inch equals three quarters of an inch. So our quilt measures 26 and three quarters and we're going to minus off three quarters, giving us the final measurement of 26 inches. We now wanna make sure that our scallop edging measures 26 inches. Easiest way to do this is to find half of your measurement. So half of 26 is 13. So I'm gonna measure from the center out and make a mark at 13 inches. And then I'm going to go along here. There's my 13 in the center and marking 26 there. Now we need to just make our scallop edge a little bit smaller. And we're going to just square the edge there like that. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. And we don't want to have a sharp point on the corner, so we're going to round those edges off to make a nice smooth scallop on both opposite edges of our scallop edging. Once you have reshaped both ends, place your back strip right sides together with the front strip. And we want to make sure that our straight edge is going to be running along the edge that has the gap of batting. Position them so all edges are nice and level now and pop a pin into each scallop. Sew exactly on the marked line with a stitch length of two. A smaller stitch length will help you to achieve nice smooth curves. Now here's a tip for sewing the valleys. What you do is instead of stitching right down to the corner, we stop with the needle down just before we get to the corner and then we're going to turn and we're going to sew one stitch straight across the valley like that and then continuing on to our next scallop. That's going to help our scallops turn through nicely. Trim the scallop edging back to an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And nick into each of the valleys. Being careful not to cut through the stitching line. Turn your scallop edging through to the right side. 
making sure that all of the edges are nice and smooth and then we're going to press. Pin the scallops onto the back of the quilt. Find the halfway points on each edge and do the same thing to the scallops. Finding all of the halfway points. Before you pin your scallop on, mark a dot in each corner that is 3 8 of an inch in from each edge. Pin your scallop onto the back of the quilt and we want to have the wrong sides facing. Align the centre points and pin and then pin the scallop out to the dot on both side edges of the quilt. So we're pinning from dot to dot. Sew on the scallop edge with a seam allowance that is slightly less than 3 8 of an inch. As you approach the corner, take the pin out of your next scallop edge and then sew all the way to the dot. Stop with your needle in the down position on the dot and then pivot to the next edge. And then just slip the edge of your scallop underneath, put the foot down and continue sewing. Now you just want to make sure that you're not going to catch the other edge of the scallop in, so just kind of pull that out of the way and continue sewing. So here's our scallop edging sewn onto the back of our quilt and you can see this little part here where we finished at the dot on the corners. This is what our quilt looks like from the front. We've got the raw seam on the top and just before we sew our machine sewn binding on to cover that raw seam up, I just want to make mention there is another way that you could finish this off and that would be by pressing the seam open on the top just like that just carefully fold in the raw edge at the corner and then you would cover that you can also cover that with our cover strip in the same way that we did with the cover strips here so you would just center that over the join make a mitre just bend to make a little mitre at the corner there and fuse that in place and then just stitch either side now that will give you a little bit of a corner just poking out um, just in between the scallop edges but that is a bit of an easier way to do it but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my quilt back over and just in the same way that I sewed on the machine sewn binding I'm going to do the same thing here and now I'm going to sew the machine sewn binding on just in the same way that I did before So here's the trick for the corner. With your scallops, just open them out and then see how I'm folding back there and just so that I'm not going to have them overlapping or catching any anything in that I don't want to catch in. And I can see my stitching line there and my stitching line there. So I'm just going to lay my binding over and I'm going to make a nick that is one centimeter or three eighths of an inch away from the edge just my small little nick like that. So that's going to start at the end of a scallop edge there. And stitching along, level with the nick, I'm going to stop with the needle in the down position, just like that. Then I'm going to pivot, flip the binding up, and continue sewing. And then I'm just going to finish off my binding just in the same way that I showed before. Here's the binding sewn onto the back of the quilt. Flip the binding towards the outside edge and press. 
Because I've used a full 3 8 of an inch seam allowance to sew my binding on, when I flip that over, I'm not going to see any of the stitching that attached the scallop. Next step is to clip across the corners. Flip your quilt over to the right side and press the binding over to the right side of the quilt, covering up the raw edge. So pin the binding down, covering up the raw seam and make the mitres at the corners. Sew the binding down, sewing close to the inner folded edge. sweet and sassy quilt all finished. This is what it looks like from the front and this is what it looks like from the back. So that's how you do a machine sewn binding and that's how you add a scallop edge. One thing to remember though is that by the time you take your seam and sew the binding you're going to lose about an inch and three eighths off the edge of your quilt. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in our next Quilted Go video. Bye!